Alex, what can you say about the uh, performance of your teammate here today? Oh, it's unbelievable. Um, obviously, it seemed like they were m making a bunch of shots and getting whatever they wanted in the first half. Uh, you know, we kind of struggled in the first half, weren't getting what we wanted. Uh, and then he comes out in the second half, you know, puts on a performance. So it's big time. Uh, obviously, we're not solely relying on one guy to uh, perform every each and every night. You know, it's kind of each and every night um, we're going to have someone step up. And tonight it was uh, Noah. How did that sort of play out, Noah? Did the game just kind of come to you? Did you feel at some point like you were kind of feeling it and had an ability to, to make an impact like that? Um. I just kind of trusted my teammates and just trusted like our game plan and our philosophy and uh, just tried to attack and hurt them where I thought I could. You guys had one made free throw in the first half and 16 in the second half. Was there a more concerted effort to get it inside or, or, yeah. or did you just kind of keep working at it? How did that play out? Definitely, definitely. Uh, I feel like we were just a lot more aggressive um, and we just got downhill a lot more. And when you get downhill, you're going to get more fouls, shoot more free throws. Yep. Alex, how big of a factor was the crowd? Oh, it's unbelievable. Kind of like I mentioned the past two times, even on the radio, you know. It's the best fan base in the conference by far. Like, there's no place comes second, um, close to second. Um, when we get fans in this place, you know, like tonight and other nights, because our fans come out on a consistent basis, uh, it's unbelievable. It provides uh, energy for us on the court. As you can see, we're getting pumped up, trying to get the crowd into it, you know, and uh, I think that's big time for us. Uh, and it's a big reason why uh, we're so good at home. Uh, Hagedorn and Amude were combined 9 for 29. What did you guys do defensively to, to keep them from hurting him? Uh, I think Hagedorn, um, just running him off the line uh, last time we played him. And obviously throughout the year he's shooting so, like 50% from the three-point line. Uh, and he kind of hurt us uh, from the uh, three-point arc uh, the first game. Uh, so we knew we had uh, you know Matt showing on ball screens and then getting back to him as quick as possible. He was getting some deflections in the first half uh, throughout the whole entire game too. And uh, with uh, Mude, I think it was just uh, forcing him into tough shots uh, and keeping him off the free throw line. Um, he's a talented player. Uh, we knew that. Everyone knows that. Um, so I think just trusting yourself and forcing him to take tough shots is what we have to do. Noah, you guys have, have kind of said all year as you've moved into first place and, and started accomplishing some things that you weren't thinking about, you know, the record or looking ahead or talking about a conference championship or any of that. But now you got one game to go, and if you win that game, you guys win the Summit League. How will you approach this game on Thursday? Same way we approach every game. Um, locked in, ready to go. Uh, we got to be mentally and physically ready, and uh, we got to go win one more if we really want the championship. So, Alex, like I just said, you're one win away from, from clinching that. What can you say about the job Hendo's done this year, uh, coming in your first year and being one win away from winning the Summit League? Yeah, uh, I think he, do, he did an amazing job just preaching to us that you know we can't get too far ahead of ourselves, uh, obviously. Um, you know, he comes in and tells us each and every day that it's about getting better each and every day and to not look uh, to what's in March or February, you know. we got to take uh, this one game at a time, and I think uh, that's what we've done. Uh, that's why we've been so good in the, uh, in the past. Um, you know, some teams will, you know, like I said, look forward to March and, you know, they'll kind of get lost uh, in the middle of the season. So I think Hendo's done a great job, you know, just enforcing and instilling in us that, each and every game, you know, we got to come out against even the bottom teams in the summer league. You know, we'll take us one game at a time and uh, keep getting better each and every day, and we'll be right where we want to be at the end of the season. Did so you get your vote for coach of the year? Yep. Hey Noah, how much today? Uh, an atmosphere like today, a game like today, a performance like you have, I mean, have to do with you deciding to flip your commitment and come here? Do you think about stuff like that after a day like today? Um. I I'm in the right spot, I'd say. Like, I enjoy it here. I'm love it here. It was a great decision. Um, I had a lot of family at the game today. They all got to come and watch, and that was something that was important to me. So, uh, yeah, I try to think about it, but I'm just definitely in the right place, I'd say, for sure. Well, first off, I want to thank our incredible fans for, for an exciting year in Frost Arena. Uh, the support that they've given us all year certainly gave us a bunch of energy and allowed us to play with a tremendous amount of confidence here. So um, we, we just can't thank them enough for how special they are and the support that they give us. Today's game, obviously, um, incredible atmosphere. Coach Lee does a great job with his guys. But I was really proud of our guys' effort today. We, we had a bunch of fight. We had a bunch of compete. We weren't perfect, but we made some big plays down the stretch. And, and um, I'm really proud that we came out on top. So with that, I'll open up with any questions. How's Doug? 
Well, I think I was here one other time with you, Zim, when something, what, we weren't sure what was going on, and I, I have the same answer. I really don't know right now. Um, he was in the training room when we met with the team, so we'll, we'll talk with Doug and his family and the docs afterwards and, and, and figure out what, what's going on with him, and, and uh, we'll find out. It looked like there was something bothering him, though, throughout the game. Was he dealing with something prior? Yeah, he had just, his foot was a little sore, you know, a little tendonitis, but uh, um, who, who knows? It's so early to tell, and just like the, the, his injury before, um, I don't want to speculate on anything. You don't know yet if what happened late was related to whatever was bothering. I really don't, Zim. I, I really have no idea. I know I know he was you know wasn't feeling real good, so he he um, I wanted to make sure that uh, to get him out of there at that point, and he, he's a special young man. So, well, uh, Noah Friedel picked you up. Yeah, that's the beauty of this team, Zim. We we've had a lot of guys um, uh, pick us up in different moments um, going into the year. I thought it was going to be one of our strengths is our balance, and, and um, it could be different guys on different nights, and, and um, that's certainly been the case. Obviously, Doug has had a really, really special year, but, but we've had a lot of young men that have had really good years. What specifically did Noah do today that allowed him to kind of take over the way he did? I think his confidence. I think uh, he, he's a competitive kid. He loves the big moment. Um, playing here at home was certainly something that helped, and, and um, he's very, very confident, you know, and it was about three weeks ago, we started putting him on maybe some more challenging matchups, and I think it's really helped him on both sides of the ball, where he can be locked in a little bit more and, and more focused mentally. And um, he was tremendous on both sides tonight. You know, on the scale of freshmen, especially true freshmen playing right away, what's his development maturity been like? I mean, how much of an adjustment to it? It doesn't seem like it's been much of an adjustment for him. Well, it may not have seemed like that, but it sure is. <laughs> <laughs> it was, uh, you know, when, when Noah got here in the summer in June, he wasn't sure what to expect. expect. L like all those guys, John, that come in the first, you know, to college for the first time. And um, so Noah, you know, obviously you have to get adjusted to that. And, and um, there's some ups and downs. Um, and Noah certainly had some ups and downs. But uh, he's matured so much in the last seven months. It's, it's incredible. He's not perfect. We don't have perfect kids, but we got good kids. And we like to grow every single day, and Noah's certainly part of that. What specifically have you seen in the maturity? What's gotten better? I think his focus, I think his attention to detail has really, understanding that those little things are really what win basketball games and, and make you competitive every single day. He, of course, you know, you've seen Noah a lot, and a lot of you guys have. He's always had the capability of hitting big shots, but, but just just that ability alone is not a true champion. You have to play on both sides of the ball. You have to make 50-50 plays, and you have to make little plays. And, and I think Noah's done a really good job of maturing and making some of those little plays to help our team. What impact did having Doug back in this one after not having him the first time? Uh, obviously, Doug is a very special player, and his ability to score on that low block, he's a very tough matchup for any team we, we play, whether it's in our league or not. He's so unique. Um, and I've always known that he could make a tremendous impact defensively, but what he's done, done on the offensive side of the ball and, and the things that other teams have to think about on how to stop Doug is really unique and special. What are you going to have to do against Hagedorn and Imude this time? Well, I thought the first time we played um, uh, the Yotes, they, they, were, they were clicking on all cylinders. And to me, you kind of have to pick and choose about what you're going to take away. Um, they, they're very balanced. All five of their starters, you know, average double figures. Um, but, but if they start getting downhill on a regular basis, I think it opens up pretty much everything. And it was really important for our team. We're going to give up some things. That's just the nature of the beast with that team. But um, we have to make sure we're dictating what we're giving up. So I thought we did a better job of keeping the ball from getting downhill. I thought we competed on the glass. They still out-rebounded us by one, which was a little disappointing. But we did have some fight. With a team that, that makes so much of its living on getting the free throw line and knocking down those shots, what adjustments do you make to keep that from becoming a big part of their game? We try not to talk about it too much, um, but but we just we just make sure, hey, show your hands, get your chest in front. They've got some very physical players getting downhill. Um, they run very good actions to put themselves in situations to get downhill as well. So we just try to, you know, get our guys comfortable with what they're going to run for the most part and just talk about showing our hands and playing without fouling and, and making them score over the top of us. But uh, we, we try not to make too big of a deal of it because sometimes when you do that, it just goes the opposite way.
Were there any specific adjustments that you made there late in the second half to start getting the ball inside with more regularity and success? We started to set a few more ball screens in the second half. I thought, you know, sometimes when you just you, you dribble it down, which we do a fair amount and just throw it in, sometimes other players get stagnant. So we tried to get the ball going side to side a few times and, and before we got paint touches. And when you do that, it makes the defense shift a little bit and maybe get a few closer catches to the basket where we can be more effective and our spacing's a little bit better. So we did set a few more ball screens, but it was still a priority to get the ball in the paint. What's Thursday night going to be like now? You, you win that game, you're the conference champion. And I know you've talked all year about not talking about that, but it's the last game, so you kind of can, right? <laughs> I don't know if I'm going to go there yet, Zim. Obviously, it's going to be a heck of an environment. Um, they're a great basketball team. We got a good basketball team. Um, they're going to have a great crowd, and our guys are excited for the moment, excited for the challenge. You know, we can't. You, you know, we we just need to go in there and be ourselves and, and share the basketball, compete like crazy. Um, certainly, we'll come up with a game plan, and our guys have been really, really focused on that here in the last two months. And, and so we're going to go try to execute like crazy, and, and uh, we'll let the chips fall where they may.